This video is sponsored by viewers like you and Skillshare. Chernobyl may be a disaster, but you can prevent a disaster in your life by learning new skills. Skillshare helps you do just that. Linked below. I'll talk more about a two-month free trial at the end of the video. Hey, Cypher here, and I'm willing to admit I was fooled by this show. Chernobyl seemed so good. Plus, HBO has a stellar record. Well, I guess except for Deadwood, but that's generally thought of as fiction. This was engrossing procedural drama, my kind of fair. Every time I went, hey, did that happen? I'd quickly look it up and confirm it. All looked well. Then I started reading the articles on it. From the BBC roping in survivors, Business Insider using the same book and documentaries the show is based on, The New Yorker exploring social history from the late Soviet Union, and Forbes linking a bunch of primary sources, I knew I had been fooled. When examined closely, this show breaks down easily, but for some reason I want to be forgiving? I know I'm wrong, but can't help myself. I want to like this. But the show definitely propounds some harmful myths, the kind that ought to be denounced. I mean, almost all TV shows are that way. Few have ever risen to a level of quality worthy of the history they attempt to depict. But HBO is one of the few exceptions. It pains me to say this, but history is not what we got here. The basics of what happened at Chernobyl are well known. A safety test at a nuclear reactor was administered poorly. They pushed the reactor to the brink, and a fatal flaw in the design led to an explosion. Only after a few tense days did the fires finally get doused, and the reactor made safe. Tons of radioactive debris was launched into the nearby area, requiring the evacuation of the nearby town Pripyat. A massive workforce liquidated the ground itself to clean up the area. The Soviets did try to downplay the magnitude of this disaster, but generally failed. Though much of it was only revealed when the Russian Federation opened up the old Soviet archives in the mid-90s. United Nations investigations have managed to connect around 5,000 cases of thyroid cancer to the disaster, which have only led to around 1-2% to fatalities. Another 31 people died from acute radiation exposure and perhaps as many as 5% of the liquidators have died of complications related to their exposure over the years. It's difficult to tell the amount of people who have died. So generally, the show is pretty accurate when it comes to this stuff, but that's just the general points. Unfortunately, it starts showing its fear-mongering as soon as it says what could happen with a nuclear reactor disaster. That's Three million, billion, trillion bullets in the, in the air we breathe, the water we drink, the food we eat. A significant thermal explosion. How significant? We estimate between two and four megatons. Nuclear reactors under whatever conditions cannot explode like nuclear bombs. But even the very real issue of fires pushing radioactive debris into the atmosphere and being spread via rain, the effects of this threat are vastly overstated in the show. There are parts in here that remind me of the ridiculous hyperbole that people employ to talk about downwinders from the Nevada test site. Four, three, two, one. Like, people honestly claim that John Wayne's fatal stomach cancer was the result of being downwind from such a test, even though he survived lung cancer a decade prior resultant from his profuse smoking. So, cancer is difficult to connect. And the way they talk about constant Hiroshima's and bullets raining from the sky is inaccurate to say the least. Even the fear-mongering surrounding the Bridge of Death is based almost purely on myth, for we have no account of such a thing taking place. This is urban legend. I mean, the show seriously claims that Chernobyl could have destroyed the entire continent of Europe. 
means the fire we're watching with our own eyes is giving off nearly twice the radiation released by the bomb in Hiroshima. And that's every single hour. It will burn and spread its poison until the entire continent is dead. Not even the most hyperbolic estimates of any nuclear reactor disaster could back up such a claim. Radiation is horrifying and all that, but we need to be careful with the hyperbole, because that fuels all the hatred nuclear power receives, which is based more on fear than honest concern. Like, look at this scene. Stand. She's dangerous to you. You want to talk about fear-mongering? The show wants us to believe that radiation is contagious. Like, they have to remove this guy's wife because somehow he's radiating. No, the reason why they had people contained like that is because of his weakened immune system. Like, that's some serious fear-mongering right there. Radiation is not contagious. <laughs> what the hell? Finally, there is the portrayals of the Soviets. We hear a lot of talk about summary executions, which is hilariously out of date for the mid-1980s. No one was executed over this whole thing. Also, the KGB is shown to be everywhere, like the Soviet Union is East Germany. Yes, people are following you. People are following those people. And you see them? They follow me. This is almost death of Stalin levels of hyperbole. Last one, move it out! But we're supposed to be following elites here. So honestly, that gets a pass from me. It's possible that such surveillance was conducted and we just don't know about it because nobody's come across the records yet. It's pretty unlikely, but you know, whatever. When we see regular folk, they are portrayed as heroes, exactly the way the Soviets would have liked. I mean, this is like propaganda level stuff. Sure, they're hard drinking, but they're also salt of the earth types that push through the trial of Chernobyl. Regardless of the bureaucrats who run the country they so love, the will of the Soviet people make the liquidation possible. This is the kind of media that was permitted by de-Stalinization. It condemns the party of a particular time, but only because of their trying to save face. And the show misses a golden opportunity here because instead of focusing on basically what the Soviet Union used as propaganda surrounding this event, they could have really dug into the context. In 1986, Gorbachev was embarking on a series of reforms called Glasnost, which means openness. And as the name implies, the basic idea was to be less secretive. When Gorbachev became general secretary, that was one of the primary changes he sought to impose. But Chernobyl was widely seen as a failure in that program. Most Soviet citizens had this whole incident disclosed to them by Radio Free Europe, a NATO propaganda station that broadcast into the USSR. Seriously, most people within the Soviet Union didn't know about Chernobyl until then. You can be sure that the decision to, to disclose was made at the very highest level, undoubtedly by Gorbachev himself. I guess that's why I was happy with the show at first. I thought it would go into that, especially when we start seeing Gorbachev himself. A foreign press? Totally unaware. But the final episode really spins the whole Russian lying storyline in the wrong direction. Instead, it makes up this whole idea that there was some dark secret being kept about the defect in the RBMK reactors. I mean, the Soviet government really was trying to prevent any info on the leak itself, possibly because of how badly screwed up the situation was, as in they simply didn't want to admit it. But they weren't trying to cover up some defect in the RBMK reactors. That defect was revealed within days of the incident itself. I mean, the show was right that the lead investigator ended up killing himself and posting a bunch of tapes complaining about how the investigation was impeded. That's true, but it wasn't impeded in the way that the show depicts. Of course, there's another possibility why the Soviet government was trying to cover this whole thing up. Perhaps it was to keep people from fear-mongering like this very show. So in a sense, the show is only proving the Soviets' censorship correct. And they could have just done exactly the opposite if they had studied the situation just a little bit better. Luckily, the USSR itself did learn a hard lesson from the failure of Glasnost. 
leading to Gorbachev's push for a new kind of openness, called perestroika. This new policy would be the ultimate downfall of 20th century communism, because it created a situation where the one-party state allowed for other political parties. The word Soviet essentially just means union, as in labor union, and the unions of other countries became rival parties. If you want a story about how secrecy has a cost, there you go. And this, at last, is the gift of Chernobyl. Where I once would fear the cost of truth, now I only ask, what is the cost of lies? For as Gorbachev himself said in 2006, the nuclear meltdown at Chernobyl 20 years ago this month, even more than my launch of Perestroika, was perhaps the real cause of the collapse of the Soviet Union five years later. I would probably still be in my Secretary General's armchair today. I could have stayed there a lot longer since I'm still quite young. How was this not the focus of the show? Maybe that's the real tragedy of this. HBO fails to finish a show again. First Game of Thrones, and then this. As you might be able to tell, there were a lot of good things about this show. At times, it got the weird and complex command structure of the USSR down pretty well. The final court scene was spot on in terms of how such trials were conducted, and the general feel of anxiety and horror is subjectively truthful. Plus, wow, so difficult to do well. I mean, like, that helicopter crash is very similar to the actual footage. In fact, a lot of it is close to what was documented with film. Even the general acts of everyone involved are mostly accurate, from the firefighters to the roof clearers. Sure, they exaggerated stuff, like how naked the miners got, or that the whole timeline is way too accelerated, or that one of the characters is an amalgamation, and the relationship between the main three were not backed up by any kind of evidence. But this stuff was all admitted to on the adjoining podcast, and most importantly, in the end cards. That is all truly great stuff. As you can tell, I really want to like this show, but there are some terrible flaws in its design, just waiting for someone foolish enough to push them to the brink. The problem lies in the fear-mongering about nuclear power and getting the most basic lesson of Chernobyl wrong. So to answer the show's central question, What is the cost of lies? The cost is fear-mongering from people who think that they are exposing the truth, but are in fact causing more problems than they hope to solve. Why worry about something that isn't going to happen? Oh, that's perfect. They should put that on our money. You know how you can stop from worrying? by building skills to help you along. Today's sponsor is perfect for that. Skillshare is a way to learn new skills online through thousands of classes, through creative and entrepreneurial subjects. Like if you wanted to learn how to write in a story like this HBO show, you could start with a series of courses on writing horror stories. But there is so much more, from all kinds of creative skills to business management. So be sure to check out the link below to get your first two months of premium membership free. And it's only $10 a month after that. And thanks Skillshare for sponsoring this episode. The link is below.